so what's on the go for today well if you probably noticed the cameras it's actually tonight um well i'm in between a whole bunch of different projects and i've decided it's time that i revisited the arrangement of these shelves up here or these little parts boxes um i've got some little j profile aluminium here the problem is quite often i don't get them lined up here and they fall off and spread stuff everywhere so uh, i have a big long strip of this stuff i think it's time i reconfigured how these parts boxes are aligned up here they're pretty much my universal dumping ground for all the sort of bits and pieces that i use most frequently so uh let's find that profile aluminium and get some of these business cards removed all right i've got everything stripped off here or at least all the buckets taken down most of the blue tack removed some of that I'm just going to leave there. I'm, I'm going to be lazy. So, uh, all right, now to get these other brackets off with my handy-dandy screwdriver and my square drive driver bit. So I bought all these square drive Maxim screws from my favorite uh, local hardware store, which is now closing their doors very soon. So I might have to stop using these at some point soon or get myself a Maxim trade account. I don't know. Anyway, let's get these pulled off. Okay, let's see how we go here. It's going to take a bit. One thing I like about square drive stuff, it stays on the drive a bit. So, uh, alright, let's get the rest of these removed. Okay, well I've got all of the old brackets off. This is the same profile aluminium that I've used before. Um, also sourced from my local hardware shop that is closing their doors. I'm going to be so crippled when they go. Well, they're pretty much already gone now. They're under administration. So, um, yeah, let's uh, get drilling with a new one. I think what I'm going to do with a new one is just drill a couple of pilot holes. And um, these uh, square drive self-tapping screws have got a fairly sharp tip. They usually bite into aluminium fairly well. Um, I also have a box of about a 1,000 really short ones. So I think I'll do a couple of long ones to acre either end. And then once it's level and in position, then I'm going to... Uh, just drill straight through with the short ones. Now I could go out to my workshop and get myself uh, freezing cold in the minus two degrees that is out there or I can use uh, one of these uh, I think I've got a three and a three and a half mil drill bit right here where's the camera there so I'm just going to fit these units straight into the drill bit hold that or into the chuck rather I do have actual drill bits somewhere I think I've busted all my 3 mil ones because I do so much 3 mil stuff. So uh, let's get drilling with the aluminium. And uh, I'm going to cheat with that too. I'm going to use a big hulking blob of blue tack. We're going to hang out along this section over here. And I'm just going to drill straight through like this. Somewhere about midway. It doesn't have to be exact with my desk. Alright, I'll leave aluminium hunks in my blue tack so that when I stick a circuit board down it makes it mysteriously blow up. I think that's what I did to a DigiSpark recently. Let's try the other side here. Put these two in uh, somewhere about the same position. Saves my desktop a little bit too. I don't put holes in it. Oh no, <laughs> it's angled down a bit. I did take a chunk out of my desk, but this is just a simple 16mm um, malamine, which is really cheap stuff. I can get it for, what, I think 12 bucks for a new desktop. It's pretty easy to do. Or I can just flip this one over because it's never been flipped. Anyway, let's get on to putting this back up. All right, my two anchor screws are in place. Now to put a few more in. And by a few more, I mean <laughs> like a thousand more. Um, although realistically, probably like that many. Not many at all. I'll see how much I need to distribute the load, but let's get a few in. Alright, it looks like it's done. That one's a little higher up. That one's centre and that one's back up high again. I thought I'd spread them out. But there's certainly enough grip on here to move the entire desk, which... As you probably gathered, is a reasonably considerable desk made out of 
lots of recycled materials. So, um, yeah, I'll get everything positioned back on and this might be the end of a quickie video. Okay, I realised the flaw in my plan. I've placed it too low, so these now hang at some ridiculous angle. I need to bring it up so that the back of this meets somewhere about here. Uh, why isn't I think it was simple? Alright, we're looking much better. It's at a much more comfortable angle with enough room to remove the box. A lot harder to get it misaligned now and I can slide them up and down here as I need. Looking good. Okay, looking good. And I've got room for lots more. Let's see if I can um, swap my lighting to low light mode. No, that doesn't really help. I wonder if I can go... I've got a neon up here somewhere. <laughs> See, it activated neon. Alright, let's go back to better lighting. That looks much better. Okay, so that's pretty much it. It's a quick little upgrade. Now I've got to work out what to do with uh, all my keys and all my bloody business cards. I think I might just get a business card folder. Anyway, um, yeah. Hope you guys found it fun. It's a pretty basic video. Might be easy watching for someone, or not. I don't know, I don't make money from these, so I really don't care, I guess. It doesn't affect me all that much. Anyway, see you next time. But wait, there's more. A free set of steak knives, or maybe not. What's this? Oh, I almost forgot. I'm in my desk upgrades, I'm adding a new current and voltmeter. Considering I blew up the current shunt on the other one, we're so it registers 12.4 volts and 0 amps, even though all of this is running off it. So I'm pulling about 1.5 amps, it's not registering anything. So after a grand total of 4 months in shipping, another one has arrived with another shunt. But I already have a shunt installed. I think I better lab test this before I actually hook the shunt up and backwards like I did last time. So, we're not over yet. And I actually bought some more bits at my uh, favourite uh, hardware store, which is very sadly closing their doors as a result of some financial troubles or the bank or something. I don't really understand why, but all I know is I'm really upset that they're closing their doors because Bunnings just doesn't have the stuff they do. So, um, yeah, we'll sort all that in a minute. Let's get this out of the bag and uh, lab test it. Apparently my dinner's up. I think this will have to wait. We'll be back in right about now. Well, that got it out of the packet very quickly. Let's have a look at what we've got. Uh, we've got a shunt here they believe to be 50 amp, which is considerably smaller than the 50 amp shunt I got to the last one. A um, bunch of nondescript connectors and some big heavier ones which I think are for the inbuilt shunt. Um, yep, that looks good. Slightly different configuration to the old one I had in that uh, this one actually has a small inbuilt shunt. Uh, maybe it might uh, cope with my stupidity a little better. And uh, I got hold of the manufacturer and they sent me this which uh, Tells me how I'm hooking up the shunt, and it looks like the shunt is on the negative side, which is what we expected, um, assuming their interpretation of cathode um, <laughs> indicates it's from a source, um, because for the record, anode and cathode uh, can change contextually depending whether you're dealing with a battery or a component, um, and that's going to set off people arguing, I'm sure of it. Um, so yes, we're going to need to, uh, and I think the, the need testing the equipment, I think that means load. Um, and uh, the rest of this, I think, is probably going to need power meter anode. Um, I think this and this are supplying the power to the actual voltmeter itself, and this is the supply voltage. This could be interesting. I'm going to have to experiment. Alright, so I took a little bit of a uh, moment to loosen some screws and decided uh, it was time that I took the yellow and the green wire, connected them to the shunt. Well, I got as far as the yellow wire and realised I had a problem. 
there is no green wire or blue wire for that matter so I talked to the supplier and got an in, unintelligible reply what do you expect for like an eight dollar meter here's my neighbor again he's decided to go a different way today now um, let's see here this is the design or the schematics that they've drawn if you can call them that um, so apparently I'm supposed to hook up the shunt to the existing shunt one so I think we're shunting from an internal shunt and then I think we just power the meter off those and the yellow does nothing would be interesting if that's how that worked so um, it's going to be interesting considering I need to supply this off its own supply um, yeah have a little look yeah so I think probably what the idea is to hook this up yep yeah, like that and then in behind here there's a couple of little trim pots if you can see them for current and voltage and I think we'll just adjust that till it reads right don't connect the black wire well okay I would have probably connected the black wire hmm confusing but so is sometimes electronics it can be a bit witchcraftery I'm not sure why they're connecting these together that really doesn't seem right but you know what let's just do what they tell us and see how that works out well wow. you just blinked and all this appeared well I have everything wired up as per the crazy ass diagram here that I think I'm not really comfortable in grabbing ground the way it is off that shunt, but if that's the way it works, that's what I've got to live with. Let's just recap what I've done here. So, our big heavy wires off our existing shunt go to um, the bigger shunt, and negative from our supply input comes into the shunt, negative to our load runs off to this motor here, of which I have many, thanks to... Uh, a friendly fellow from Leonard Audio. Um, now that's our load. Um, our positive from our load goes back to our common positive block here, which goes to both our red and our yellow wire, strangely. I think one is supply for it and the other is backlighting supply or, or volt reading supply, the read wire on that. Mm. Anyway, most of these self-powered ones, when you do look at them, if they've only got two wires, there is a little bridge in here that bridges what that yellow wire would connect to back over to positive. But I think they haven't done it in this case because it's intended to run from two different supplies. Anyway, um, let's see what we can get out of this. Uh, the other reason why I'm using this little fancy uh, motor for a load instead of something like a light globe, uh, I'll show you why in a moment. I just need to reconfigure my blue tack arrangement to help this uh, be a bit more photogenic. Okay, so the reconfiguration is complete. Let's fire this up. We'll go over here and flick a switch. And nothing's working. Ah, I think I see why. This little thing here. There we go. So, you'll notice it's not reading any current, but it is reading volts. Here's how I increase the load. Well, we had three amps there for a minute. So we are actually reading current. That's a first for me. Oh. I've only got a five amp fuse on this circuit, so... You'll notice my lights may be dim when I wind this in here. Alright. That's good. Now I need to shut this down and clean all the blue tack off the shaft. Alright, so I'm just examining the shunt here and notice that it says 50 amp, 75 millivolts on the side and something else, I can't really read, something about 5% or whatnot there. Um, I suspect the shunt that I have is also a 75 millivolt one. So I'm going to find myself a light source and crawl through the cabling area of my desk, which I warn you now is kind of messy. Now, I apologise for the full poor cameraman or poor camera work here, but I have to get into a compromising position. Oh my. And have a look at the existing shunt I have here. 
Right, this carries the whole load for my workbench through these two fairly hefty terminals. Um, and that carries through a ground terminal block there. And there is a fuse block hiding up there. There we go. Everything in here does have fuses, although I just kind of got a little bit haphazard with the zip ties. At some point during these desk upgrades, I do need to really trim these all to the right length and get in with a label maker and make it a little easier to find. This shunt, yep, it says 100 amp. I think it says 75 millivolt. 75 or 25? What have we got here? I'm pretty sure all these Chinese ones are the same. No, it is 75 millivolt. Well, that's good. I won't need to swap that out. I think I'll hook it all up to the same shunt, which I think is just a hunk of steel bar with a calibration groove cut into it. Uh, all right. Let's uh, get out of this compromising position. Now, in stock, I happen to have a selection of cable. Um, I'm trying to decide what would suit the purposes here. I don't think 25 or 30 amp speaker wire, OFC speaker wire, is really called for here. Maybe some of this stuff. What's this? 25 gauge, um, 0.12 mil. I think that should carry the few milliamps that is required to run that meter. Okay, let's pull this out. Now, among other desk upgrades, I've added a fire extinguisher in here, quite close to that section. And you can see in the background here, there's also an RCD. Um, safety is actually important. My old voltmeter has been sitting here for quite some time, as my normal spot of resonance is immediately across from this. But um, I'm thinking about moving that. I really need it in a more visible position. So it might go up near the command center up here, um, up on top of this, um, right next to these terminals, which feed in from the variable supply. That one there, I believe, but it can be jumped into that one or the crow for whatever reason I might want to do that. Um, oh, and this is also another one of my inventions. This is a video coming soon, and this is a... Um, 12 volt uninterruptible power supply module but we'll go into detail in that later i can hear my neighbor's music again <laughs> he's come home with the subwoofers running all right so if we're going to move this meter from over there we're going to need a few more than just a couple of inches of cable so we'll need to pull a length of this off figure out how much we've got and do some soldering so i think i might measure all this up and we'll jump straight to the soldering phase now, having taken the time to inspect my own diagrams of how I've got everything wired up, there is potential that um, the way that shunt's wired that I could have some sort of a ground fault uh, across the main supply line that comes in. Now, on the other end of that, there's several fuses. I think there's a 30 amp fuse supplying my desk, as well as a 50 amp um, circuit breaker across the battery. Um, just because, you know, I like to be doubly sure about things. The problem is that wire is not going to carry that kind of a current. So I thought I might go through my heat shrink collection here and probably two layers of heat shrink just to make doubly sure we don't have an accident. I might even hide a nice little, um, probably a nice little 2AG fuse in here or rather a 5AG. I think I've got a bunch of those. A little baby fuse I might just hide in here somewhere. Uh, once I figure out, I think this is positive common, so maybe on the positive line. In any case, I need to actually insulate this properly and not just half ass it with some tape this time. So, uh, yeah, that's enough about heat shrink. Alright, we're up to the soldering component here. And yes, I'm going to twist my wires like this instead of doing proper inline splice. Um, partly because the cable's small and partly because I, it's one thing I can sort of be a little lazy on here. But before I do too much else, I need fume extraction because I'm using a lead-based solder. I'm using 6040 tin lead. Uh, it is very nice to work with as opposed to the lead-free. But um, now the other problem I have is this heat shrink is kind of like 100 times too big for this job. I hope we'll get it just enough. Um, I kind of missed the JCAR store today, which means I didn't get a chance to get any thinner heat shrink. I did, however, catch cheapest chips and got myself a new 
stoner torch that I use for doing heat shrink. And I call it a stoner torch because I see lots of stoners with them. Not that I see lots of stoners. Jesus, this conversation's getting worse and worse the further down I get, isn't it? Well, this might pass. I think if the next one, if I shove a little bit of hot glue in there, we might get away with it, but that's good. That at least will insulate it. I don't know what I can do with a negative wire. It picks it up off the shunt. I guess we don't need it. I think what I'll do is I'll cut this to length and just strip that one wire off. Hmm. Oh well. Um, and that actually comes off the fuse block too, so I might not need to hide a fuse in that. So uh, anyway, although if it's running a common negative through here, there could be a ground loop through that. I'd better just add fuses on both just to be sure, but I'll hide them inside some heat shrink. Um, I'll do that in a minute. So where else are we? Oh, I need to tin these ends. Um, I need to trim that and add a suitable amount here that I can fit it under the screw block. If I can't, I'm going to have to dig up some terminals. And uh, surprise, surprise, I might have to do something properly for a change. Anyway, there we go. Get them off here. I hope you guys can see this on camera. Um, let me have a look through the viewfinder. Let's come all the way over here. That's better. Now you can see my sexy shirt that I bought in the US. That is probably, probably manufactured in China. Um, I'm not entirely sure. Um, for those of you, I am married to an American citizen, whom hopefully in the very near future will be an Australian citizen as, all, as well, making her a dual citizen. That has been a story that has taken numerous years at this point. Okay, we've got these tinned. I'm just going to roll them around if they're not too hot and make a little hook to go underneath the screw terminals. And for the record, if you're still staring at my shirt, typically I don't like wearing logos on shirts or any kind of graphics for that matter. But I took an exception to this one because I am very much partial to wolves for various reasons I won't go into here. Alright, now I need to go hook this up to the shunt. Now unfortunately I'm not going to be able to manage to film connecting it to the shunt and holding a torch and laying on my back and all the other stuff like holding a screwdriver that's going to get challenging so I might just show you the finished product um, this length however is still connected to the reel of cable which is also my tripod at the moment because I haven't fixed my octopod yet so that will also get cut to length off camera so um, yeah let's let's get cracking I guess I might I've trimmed the bit off this as well as to avoid a, an accidental short so um, yeah all right let's get this installed now, one of the more disappointing aspects of um, the strip out of the old one is I used some of my really nice high voltage um, silicon cable. It's expensive stuff and I did the job properly only to find out that I'd killed the meter. That's a frustrating bit. Um, and in any case, I've crawled in, stripped out the old meter, which we can see side by side here is a slightly different configuration and a much tinier shunt in there and smaller package chips. Clearly it's a newer, better model. So um, anyway, we have this wire here, which will run back through a terminal from over here. I'm going to reuse this um, because I soldered that on. That's going to go back to my main fuse box to supply power to the meter. Um, and then I've got the tricky bit of following back my heavy cables to find out which side is the supply side of the shunt. So. Um, solder that connector on and I'll jump to somewhere where I'm nearly done with it. I've still got to hook up a couple of long wires to this. Now just to keep the perfectionist among you somewhat happy, I thought I'd show you that I am attempting to at least get some assemblage of an inline splice happening here. Not strictly how it's done but I thought I'd let you know that I'm trying to make it look kind of neat. It's not what I'd do inside um, something that I wanted to do professionally I would do everything properly but this is kind of a half-assed attempt at getting it to look sort of okay because you know like the general public might see this and 
I don't want people to really know that I'm quite the half-assed person at home that I am. I wouldn't do this to somebody else's system, I'd do it properly. But, um, I can hear people in the background going, well, you see that now. And well, you know what, that's the internet, people are trolls. Not much I can do to convince people of my real intent, because you know what, people are never really convinced. Do I sound sour and bitter and torn up by years of internet abuse? Maybe I do. On the plus side though, for good news, this heat shrink seems about the right size for this wire. So that's looking good. So just to explain what I've done here, I have used the trace wire for the negative here. I had to double check that. Um, so I'm going to connect the trace um, in... Now here's, here's where things differ. The Chinese usually use the trace wire as positive. Um, my old man and pretty much everybody else that's trained me uses the trace wire as a negative and it seems to change so anyway this is a negative so I've got some indication as to which wire needs to be connected to the power side and the positive side needs to be connected to or the positive wire needs to be connected to the load side so what I'm going to do right now um, just because in low light conditions the trace can be very hard to see I'm going to splice this off. Now I have some insulation tape. Um, correction, I have a roll of Click branded looming tape, which is might as well be cellophane tape. In fact, it's not even that sticky. This is horrible cheap stuff. But all I'm going to use it for here is to stick to itself, which it barely manages. Don't ever buy Click branded tape. Get Nitto. Anyway, that's a nice flag that I can't really confuse because it's going to wave around on the end of the cable for me so that's good now I need to do what I did before and tin these ends put a hook on them and crawl into the dark confined space all right I'm going to attempt an odd camera angle here I hope it works I don't know how much you're gonna see of this so we have our black flag here I need to trace where my cables going so this side of the shunt is going to my terminal block which runs off to all the other things that are drawing power through all these bits of OFC cables. I, I should note when I put this together I didn't have really any money at all so I used what I could recycle. Um, so I'm going to guess our big fat wire here is our load side and our black wire here is coming off the main input wire which is this one that goes to a two pin DC plug in the wall runs back to the house battery. So that would be our supply side and I may have just forgotten what this flag was for but I think that's the negative side um, for our negative supply. So that means that side of the shunt is our supply side which I'm correct in assuming that is bypassing our, bypassing our fuse box so there is potential for ground loop so I do need to be careful that I don't short this out. So. I think once I've got everything working, I'll probably come back to this. Oh, I've got a concentrate here. I'll come back to this once I have everything working and I'll add a fuse in the negative wire here. Probably right up against this shunt, just so I don't have any unexpected accidents. Um, because there is a, a UPS connected to this circuit as well. On occasion, I haven't actually checked this ever on this thing. Um, some UPSs can provide mains potential across the battery to ground. Um, so I do probably need to check that at some point. I think I've got some of the insulation under that. We need to just redo that. How long does it take one guy to do two terminals? Huh. Well, how many jokes can we make about that, I guess? Let's get this back in there. I should really have put screw terminals on that. Okay, so that's that bit done. Um, now, I'm in a bit of an unfortunate position right now. So let's see if we can drop this off here. Sorry about obstructing the camera view, guys. Over here, I'm jammed in amongst all of this, and I need to go underneath. Like knitting a pair of socks, almost. I need to go up and find a terminal here, which I just about can't reach. Alright, there is a terminal in here. No, I'll have to get that from the top. So, 
let's uh i'll do that off camera and uh we'll change our angles in a moment okay well it's sort of working but frustratingly my current is not and i think i've got the shunt backwards this is the trap i fell into last time so let's turn on all my circuits here i'll show you what i've got i have all the circuits on my desk here I'm going to turn on all of these and that should be about three to four amps of load which we know it will measure and it's not measuring anything time for a pen and paper turn off all my switches okay let me have a think about this okay I switched over to the supplied shunt and uh, we have current measurement let's turn everything on by pulling one amp according to this interesting well this is about one amp per meter of LED stripping and this is running about one meter I think there's about two inches or so under the desk so that amounts to about what I would expect um, I'll put some other loads on it in a minute um, for the moment I'm just gonna go and check this shunt Okay, sorry about the screwed up camera angle here, but the supply chunt looks a lot better and more importantly it has a screw block on it. So I can screw it to the board up here and get it out of the way and prevent some accidental shorting from it hanging in the nowhere here. Although this is pretty tightly restricted access, it's pretty unlikely anything's going to brush against it, but you know, better safe than sorry. And uh, down here, all the bits and pieces, whoa, focus. All the bits and pieces of the old shunt I have to go and find. Um, I had a clip lead across the shunt to maintain power uh, because this shunt also supplies power to the repeater for the um, proximity beam across the front of the property. I didn't want the doorbell going off and exciting my apprentice which from the pitter patter of apprentice feet in the background you can probably hear that plan didn't go quite as, as planned. Alright so let's get this thing screwed up. Okay, so again, apologies for the poor filming. I've got super pointy little things like these poking in my way. Um, but yes, I have the shunt now. Oh, come on, focus. This is really difficult. I have the shunt now hooked up well out of the way and out of reach. Nicely tied down. Uh, that should prevent any sort of accidental contact here. This is all 12 volts, of course. It's not uh, dangerous voltages. Um, but short circuits in this situation can be a bit of a uh, fire hazard, so hence my backup precaution and all the fuses and breakers and whatnot. All right, I'm keen to get out of this hole. Okay, there we go. We have it nicely situated above my panel here. It's not quite as easily visible as I would have thought, but um, you know what? I'm not looking at this a lot of the time when I'm sitting across the room, so here's where I'm most likely to want to see it. So apparently I'm pulling 0.6 amps. I think I might need to calibrate that somehow um, at some point. But uh, this is saying 12.2, that's saying 12.0. Hmm. I might get my multimeter onto that and just make a quick adjustment. Okay, cheapy multimeter agrees with the 12 volt house battery meter, which is pretty well what I calibrated it at to start with. And I think that averages the um, last that digit too and it's also I think these leads I made up out of that silicon cable too are probably not the best that says 12.0 I think I might correct that to 12.2 and uh, then I I'm not sure how I'm going to do a current test um, with this thing I might need to calibrate that later but for the moment it gives me a ballpark figure these blue switches are Pretty blinding so we'll see here we've both got 12.5 let's apply a load that's not too bad it's registering about the same it's also 0.6 amps I'm not really sure that's correct but I'm gonna get a measuring tape out and measure that strip of LEDs although there is a couple of other loads on this circuit at the moment hmm how am I gonna measure this you know what I think I might I've got a good old analog current meter because I could use the, the current shunt in this, that's probably far better calibrated, but I think what I'm going to do is connect a known load 
to it and then see if it increases by that amount. So now I need to find myself something I can use as an own load. I'm thinking I've got a whole stack of resistors. I've got a couple of big, uh, I know what I can do. I have a couple of big ceramic um, ceramic resistors. Rather they're, um, what are they? They're, they're nichrome wire coil inside a ceramic block. But either way, um, I've got a couple of low resistance ones that will probably do the job. Let's go and find them. Okay, calibration time. So let's go over my quick setup. I have an analog meter here from Dick Smith Electronics Proprietary Limited um, that has a calibrated shunt in it. I've taken this 8 ohm resistor, I've measured it and with a good calibrated meter and it reckons it's 8.4 ohms or 8.7 ohms. It's a little warm at the moment because I've just tested it. That is in series with this clip lead which connects to this over here, banana plug. This banana plug travels all the way up to my current here. So, Ohm's law says that this should be about 1.4 amps. So let's have a look here. And let's plug this in. We'll watch our lights dim slightly. That will come up around about what I would expect, 1.4 amps. Now if we have a look at our meter here, we would expect that to go up to about... 2 amps. There we go, very very close, 2 amps. Okay, I'd say that's pretty well spot on and that up and down hunting is probably because we've experienced a bit of voltage drop which affects Ohm's law, which affects the reading. So I'd say that's about spot on. Let's try again, see if we level out. We're dropping to 11.9, about 2 amps. That's pretty good. All right. I've got another test for it, but I've got to pack up this stuff first. All right, for the final current test, I'm going to fire up this ICOM IC208H. Um, now, for those who don't follow my channel very closely, this belonged to my late brother, uh, as did this scanner here and quite a few other things I have. Uh, if you want to know the longer story about that, um, there is a documentary that I wrote, it's on both of my YouTube channels in fact, and it's called uh, Be A Man, and it's, uh, you'll probably find it a little bit further down on my channel list if you go looking. That explains some of that uh, scenario, but uh, anyway, this is quite power hungry, it's a 50 watt radio, it's confined to 5 watts on the UHF band um, to comply with ACMA regulations. So. Um, there are ways of avoiding that, but we haven't bothered with this one. So we're going to choose, um, we're just going to try and bounce off our local repeater here. We have a channel 4 UHF repeater. I'm just going to see if I can get um, a tail off the repeater here. Okay, we are bouncing off the repeater. That's good. Well, I'm going to choose a band that doesn't upset people quite so much. I know that... Locally, the channel 5 repeater got stolen, so that's less likely to upset anybody. Let's just double check. Yep, no tail. Okay, let's check how much current we're pulling here. So it is now pulling a bit of current to run the fan. So let's go transmit right now. Yep, <laughs> I think my brother may have modified that. 8.8 um, .8 amps is a bit more than 5 watts. So we might have to do some investigating on that and maybe tune it down a little bit. It probably shouldn't be doing that. Um, although the SWR might not be strictly correct. I didn't check the, the standing wave ratio when I installed this. So uh, it could be poor tuning as a result of that and it could be just reflected power. But as far as I know, this one was unmodified. I better check that because I don't want to be breaking any rules. So. Um, Anyway, I probably need to check my antenna. It's been cold and icy lately, um, and I do have uh, his old Station Master antenna up there, and I believe it had some problems with moisture wicking in through the fiberglass, so that may happen. It's a modified J-Pole antenna, so um, they are easily upset if there's moisture in them, or well, most antennas are, with perhaps the exclusion of a straight stick. Anyway, that aside, our current meter is working nicely, so... Um, I've got probably one other little uh, 
one other little addition to put in here until I uh, can do some more upgrades. So let's go and fish them out. I had a quick little check of my antenna connections and uh, I gave one a bit of a squirt of some contact cleaner of the stuff I have here. I get this stuff from Jcar. It's magic. So I cleaned the lower antenna connection at the back of the radio. Now I haven't changed any other power settings. Let's try now. 5 amps, or 5 amps at a starting current of about 1.2. That's about in keeping with 5 watts. So all I did was clean a connection, so that that's good. I'm actually happy now. I'm probably getting a much cleaner signal out. So um, that'll be good when I actually need to use it. And considering I'm probably going to be skipping out on the fire season this year due to multiple sclerosis, I probably won't be doing the fire towers again, so... I'll be sitting at home talking to them from here, I guess, so uh, it might come in handy there, because I've still got friends on the towers, but unfortunately I'm probably not going to be able to continue to do that job. And it's been eight years. But we'll talk about that in a different video, and I'll probably have some ranting to do about some other similar topic. So, yeah, let's move on. All right, the final parts for this week's or this month's installment of desk upgrades um, are these boxes. I got these from my local uh, hardware store that is going out of business or closing the doors or I'm not entirely sure what's happening, but they're not going to be there and they have everything and I'm going to be devastated when they close their doors. So I'm buying everything I can off them, even these used tubs. Um, so these... Uh, to finish the project up here and fill in the extra room that I made by installing this bar up here. I guess the yellow one is probably not going to be a candidate. I need to fix the back of these. Alright, let's try this one. That's a good one. Maybe I need to go back to them and pick out a couple more of the good ones. In any case, I'm going to bend and stretch and make these fit somehow. Yeah, that one's one of the crappy ones. All right, maybe yellow might be a contender if I can fix it. All right, let's try that. All right, a bit of a reheat with a stoner torch and yellow is back in business. And I expected that might happen and these key hanging screws are gonna get in the way. So three more buckets will be good. I'll be able to organize the junk pile that is in these now. Um, this is generally my usual uh, dumping ground for stuff that I don't know what to do with so now I know what to do with it is sort it out and put it in other junk boxes all right so that's pretty well it for desk upgrades for the time being um, if you're liking the desk upgrade videos and all my ranty incoherent references to everything then let me know if you don't then you don't that's fine in any case I'm actually going to end the video now so See you all next time. I hope it's been fun. Tell me what you think.